The brand new Insta360 ONE RS is a camera that wants to be the best of two worlds. But does it succeed or is it a jack of all trades but master of none? That's the question I set out to answer when I started to review this camera. As a newcomer to the ONE R system, I was pretty excited to have something this small that could be both a traditional action camera and a 360 camera. So let's see how this new and improved version performs. Before I get into this review, I want to mention that making this video was a bit more difficult than usual. On top of the usual challenge of getting my vocal cords to work properly, the day after this camera was delivered, I broke my big toe. If you're squeamish, look away now. So, some of the shots I'd planned to get, like riding the unicycle, skateboarding and running, were difficult or just not possible. In fact, just walking was a challenge. So if the following video isn't quite up to my usual standard, I do apologize. In the box you get the camera with the 4K mod already installed, the 360 mod, a lens protector, a mounting case, a 64 gig micro SD card, and a charging cable. It's shaped like a GoPro and it's about the same size and similar weight, but it's colored with a bit more pizzazz. The plastics they've used feel really nice. They're thick and hard, a bit like my, nope, I'm not gonna go there, the three modules each have their own unique textures, which add grip and create a feeling of quality. Unlike Chris Rock's face, this doesn't make any sounds when pressure is applied. There are no squeaks, creaks or clicks when squeezed, which is surprising for a modular device. There's a USB-C port and a card slot behind the little door and two buttons on the top. The LEDs on the front and rear are a really cool shade of teal. I've never seen that on an action camera before and I like it. Before you can capture any footage, you'll need to register an account, agree to some terms, and activate the camera. You'll also need to update the firmware before it can be used. This whole process took about 25 minutes for me, and after that, I was up and running. The user interface is easy to learn, and things are laid out in an intuitive fashion. They've done a good job of making the most out of the space available on the tiny display. The included mounting bracket has been completely redesigned, making it a lot easier to insert and remove the camera. Like most action cameras, it can take photos, and in this case, they're 48 megapixels. And like most action cameras, normally no one's going to use it to take photos. But because this comes with a 360 module, it changes the game and makes this a camera that I actually will take a lot of photos with, so I can view them in VR. And if you're into Google Earth, you can use this to contribute your own photos to Street View, and you can even do virtual property tours. It can do up to 6K resolution, but only in a 2.35 by 1 aspect ratio with a maximum frame rate of 25 FPS. That's a very wide cinematic look with a really high resolution. It's kind of amazing that cameras this small are now doing 6K. When selecting this mode, the camera warns that it doesn't work well in low light, so keep that in mind. Another thing to note is that in 6K, there's no stabilization, so you have to apply it in the desktop software which crops in quite heavily, leaving you with a final video that's less than 6K. In normal video mode, it has a max resolution of 4K at up to 60 FPS. The video quality is very good. Colors are very natural. Some of my other action cameras tend to overcook the colors, but this one keeps things looking more realistic. There's a new mode called Active HDR, and this is able to capture HDR footage in real time. And when used in the right type of scenes, it's supposed to improve the footage. Here are some examples with and without Active HDR. Insta360 is famous for its stabilization, and the ONE RS produces footage smoother than a well-moisturized leprechaun riding a dolphin through maple syrup while listening to Lionel Richie on a pair of wired Bang & Olufsen headphones.
Unlike the One R, the One RS has flow state stabilization built into the camera, and there are three levels to choose from, though each causes varying levels of lag on the preview screen. You can, however, turn flow state off, which gets rid of the lag, and the camera still records the gyro data, which means you can apply flow state stabilization later in post and get the same great results. Something to note, though, is that the 4K module does not support any form of horizon leveling in real time. For that, you'll need to connect the 360 module, and on that, it's absolutely superb. This is a camera specifically designed and optimized for daytime activities in good light. But I do low light tests for every camera I review in this channel, so I wanted to see how this one would do in low light conditions, especially now that it has a larger half inch sensor. And it didn't do too bad a job, though the stabilization struggles a bit here and there. For slow-mo, this doesn't quite have the resolution and frame rate combos I hoped for, like 4K 120 or 2.7K 240, but it does do 2.7K up to 100 FPS and 1080p up to 200 FPS. To get stabilization in slow motion, you'll need to process the footage afterwards in Insta360's desktop software. And when you add stabilization there, it crops in quite heavily. And another thing to note is that the camera isn't capable of playing back the slow-mo files on the screen. Instead, you'll have to view the footage on your phone or computer. This is where this device is unique in the action camera world. Because one module can be swapped out for another, transforming it into a 360 camera. And for me, that's the big selling point. No one makes 360 footage easier to capture and edit than Insta360. The footage is very similar to the One X2. Unfortunately, not much has changed with the 360 module since the previous version. It still maxes out at 5.7K30, but the footage still looks great. And of course, the real magic of using the 360 mod is for the ability to reframe in post. You just press record, let it capture everything at the time, and then choose where you want to point the camera in post. Another reason I love the 360 mod is for photos. I can capture a picturesque place and then revisit it with a VR headset when I'm older and everything's been turned into nuclear ash because politicians. Insta360 say the audio has been improved on the One RS. And while I don't have the old model here for comparison, I did do some tests and I think it sounds okay. It's not as good as the competition, but voices are clear, it has low self-noise, and it doesn't sound over-compressed. 
To my ears, it just sounds a bit thin and lacks bass compared to my other recent action cams. So let's see how it picks up my voice. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Let's test the audio on the Insta360 One RS. This is an audio test of the Insta360 One RS with the audio setting set to stereo. It does time lapses and hyperlapses, and here's a few examples of those. For this test, I chose settings that I think most people will use most of the time. 4K30, stabilization set to standard, color set to vivid, and it recorded for just a few seconds shy of 80 minutes before the battery died with no signs of overheating. That's indoors with an ambient temperature of 22 degrees C and no airflow, and the screen was on the whole time. So battery life and thermal management are excellent. Some love the two-tone paint job, but I'm not a big fan of the amount of red they've used. I think it would look better in all black, but you can buy an all black battery if you want to make it more stealthy. I'm not a fan of the forced registration, and having to update the firmware before it can be used. All the top action camera makers do this now, and I miss the days when I could just buy a camera and start using it right away, without having to give up personal information, agree to terms, connect to the internet and download updates before it can be used. It doesn't have a tripod socket or any kind of mounting hardware on the camera, so I always have to put it in the mounting bracket, and that makes it quite big and cumbersome. When using the RS on a coldish day, the inside of the lens protector sometimes fogs up. The laggy display when shooting or even just composing takes a bit of getting used to, as does the delay and blank screen when you hit record. These things make the camera feel a bit slow. I don't like how dependent the camera is on external software to do some of its features. For example, you can't apply stabilization in camera in certain video modes or when shooting hyperlapses. Instead, you have to import those files into the desktop software, apply stabilization there, and export them as new files. And you can't play back slow-mo files or time-lapse files on the camera to see what you captured. You can only view them on your phone or your computer. Not everyone is drawn to modular cameras, but in this case, there are some good reasons to go down this path. One is that it costs less. Buying an action camera and a separate 360 camera would cost a lot more money than this. And if you break one of these four modules or your battery wears out, you only have to replace that one part. They also give you a 64 gig memory card in the box to get you up and running, something that almost no other big name camera company does. And I think they should all follow Insta360's lead with that. As an action camera with the 4K mod only, it's not bad, but I feel it falls short of its competition and it doesn't have some of the features and frame rates that the others do. It's a little too dependent on the desktop software and there's no horizon leveling in real time unless you swap in the 360 module. On the upside, the stabilization is very good, the build quality is excellent, the battery life is superb and it doesn't seem to have any problems with overheating. This thing will keep recording right until the battery runs out. And so, with all that being said, who is this camera intended for? Well, if you want an action camera that can also do 360, this is the best and really the only hybrid option there is. If you don't need the higher frame rates and resolutions of today's other action cameras, but instead you value being able to replace individual modules should one get damaged, this is the one to get. If you just want the highest quality footage and the best slow motion and have no interest in 360, there are better options on the market in my opinion, though they too come with their own problems. I think its main strength is its hybrid nature. I think it's a really good 360 camera and a good enough action camera. Hopefully this video went some way in helping you understand what this camera can do and who it's meant for. If you found it useful or interesting, I always appreciate a thumbs up. 
Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.